This building is basically a three-story structure. The primary power is fed by utility transformers on the other side of the wall, which then comes into the secondary transformers and then fed directly upstairs to the UPS, and from there fanned out to the data center floor. This means the distance between the utility power and the load is as little as 80 linear feet. Similarly, the cost to distribute cooling water is also much less since the travel path of the piping is a fraction of the typical data center which is spread out over a single story. Due to the vertical design of the data center, we also have similar savings in our cooling design. This means we use a lot less copper for power and steel for pipes than traditional data centers which are spread across a single floor. The air handling systems are on the third floor and locating them directly above the equipment eliminates nearly 100% of the duct work. This not only saves in construction costs, but also reduces the horsepower required by the fans since the travel path of the air is very short. You can see where the conduit leaving the primary switchboards extends upward toward the load in the data center. In this design, one set of feeds extends up into the data center area to serve the load requirements of the south end of the building, and a second set of the conduit extends up into the third floor to distribute the load to the north end of the building. We use flywheel UPS systems that easily carry the required load in the event of utility failure before transfer to the diesel engines. Not only can flywheel systems be more efficient than batteries, the advantages include the ability to house the flywheels in a warm ambient location which eliminates the cost to construct a special environment. This is also a green solution because there are no batteries to replace. We're now on the first floor of the facility where a massive chiller plant resides. For 90% of the time, we're able to use outside air for cooling. However, for that 2 to 3% of the time when we do reach 100 degrees Fahrenheit, we use these chillers to cool the facility. Our cold aisles maintain a 75 to 80 degree temperature, which allows us to use the outside air for a much longer period of time, but also allows us to raise the supply temperature of the chillers to 55 degrees, which translates to about a 28% savings over normal chiller use. We are also able to use non-potable water as a makeup water to the cooling towers, which is another green feature of the building.